Thanks very much, David. Um, being the fourth speaker on the topic of uh, the future of journalism, I'm, I'm conscious of the, the possibility of, of duplication. And I thought it might be uh, useful, actually, to rather than look into the future, to look into the past. And given that we're talking about 30 years, uh, uh, a 30 year anniversary, just to ask where we were 30 years ago. And I was just thinking about this last night. And about 30 years ago, I was at university, and as it was my first uh, venture into the world of journalism, was my university dissertation. And I'm just thinking about how I produced that dissertation. I actually wrote it longhand on paper. And, and when I'd done about 25 pages, I went and took it to a, a very nice white-haired lady called Mary, who would type it up and drop it back at my house. Uh, I would make the corrections, and I would drop them back at, at, at her house. And, and eventually, we sort of got to the, the dissertation. And I suppose that you could call that kind of early uh, example of, of collaborative uh, editing. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's extraordinary how, how, how things have changed. And a couple of years later, uh, I went to, to the BBC as a, as a trainee. Um, and in those days, we did have uh, computers, but we still had typewriters. And Mark and, and Nick and, and David will all remember this. We had, we had typewriters in the cupboards in case the computers went wrong. Um, and we didn't have mobile phones, and we didn't have the internet. And if you wanted to search for a story, uh, you walked along the corridor to a place called News Information, and you went up to a desk and you said, uh, I wonder if you could uh, direct me to recent articles about the, the Bodleian Library, for example. And, and a clerk would hand you a manila folder with yellowing newspaper cuttings, and you would look through them, and if you were lucky, you could find the article you had in mind. And just as often as not, it hadn't been cut, and you, you didn't get there. Uh, and that's a, that's a pretty uh, extraordinary uh, state of affairs, but w within our, the, the lifetime, the lifespan of our, our journalism careers. So, so where are we today? We, we, we're here. Uh, this is the, the Nexus 7, uh, launched last week. Um, other tablets are also available. <laughs> um, but you know, what, it's just worth just thinking a little bit what, about what this does. You know, with this, you've really got access to most of the world's information. Uh, you've got access to most of the world's newspapers. All the, all the editions of the newspapers we've been talking about today, you can translate those uh, newspapers. Uh, you can you can sign up. You can, you can hook it up to your your credit card, uh, and you can uh, then you can buy you can buy millions of, of songs. You can buy books. You can buy uh, magazines. And of course, the other extraordinary thing about about devices like this, and of course, smartphones too, is that it's an extraordinary publishing and a news gathering device. So I, it's got a camera on it. I can, I can do live broadcasting via it with, with, uh, with Hangouts. Uh, I can blog and, and tweet on it. So the, the, the thought that, uh, that within the, li the lifespan of, of the journalism careers of, of, of most of us in this room, let's be frank, um, we can go from literally from pen and paper to something that can give us access to, to all the world's information, make all of us a news gatherer and all of us a news publisher, uh, is an extraordinarily sobering thought, really. And uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the printing press took hundreds of years for its, its effect to be felt, but the effect of the digital revolution has been within uh, a very, very short lifespan. And uh, Google's lifespan is, is actually, by coincidence, 15 years. Ha half of this period, uh, we're 15 years old uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. And obviously, we have played, uh, we've been quite a, 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 an important player in, in, in this and sometimes uh, attracted a, a reasonable degree of, of controversy. Um, and actually, as I, I've been at Google for about five years, and I've, I've spent quite a lot of time at, at uh, journalism conferences. And being a kind of focus group of, of one, I, I think I have detected a shift in the mood in the industry towards uh, Google in that period. And I think if we'd been at a similar event two or three years ago, uh, the panel would have been called uh, Google Good or Evil, or uh, perhaps Google Friend or Foe, or uh, I, I once sat on a panel which was called, rather, in some desperation, what are we going to do about Google? <laughs> uh, so I, I think, I'm pleased to say that I think the relationship in, in recent years has, has much improved. And really, what we're aiming to do, uh, both with, with Google News and, and the other things that we offer to, to the news industry, 
is to create a, a, a virtuous circle of, of, of support for high quality journalism because we, we obviously believe that, that high quality journalism and high quality content on the web is, ex is extremely important both for society but also for, uh, for the future of, of the web. So uh, first of all a little word about, about Google News and, and, and uh, one or two stats. Um, round about six billion clicks a month uh, is sent through to the websites of news publishers uh, through our services, Google, Google News and other services. And in 2012, we shared $7 billion globally uh, with news publishers around the world. But as, as Mark has said last night, and, and many others have said, for individual news operations, the ad-supported model is a struggle. And we, we absolutely acknowledge that. And what we're aiming to do is to be as helpful as possible in that difficult transition. And the way that we see the virtuous circle working is engagement. Again, Mark said towards the, last, the end of his speech last night, it's all about, about engaging the readers. And engaging the readers means more than text and, and pictures. So we're offering a, you know, a, a whole range of, most, for the most part, free tools to help engage the readers and keep them on the pages for longer. And that could be through maps, it could be through YouTube, it could be through uh, Hangouts, where you can do li live broadcasting uh, for your publication, or indeed it could be through data journalism, and G Google Fusion Tables is a, an extremely useful tool where we can get publicly available data and turn that into visualizations and uh, uh, data visualizations and, um, uh, and uh, little movies. So the aim is to, to keep people engaged on the pages and then to work with publishers on more and more sophisticated advertising tools to increase the revenues, which can then be fed back into uh, the, uh, the, the provision of, of journalism. So th that's the way the, the ad-supported model works. But I think what is the, the next inc very encouraging phase is, is on, on tablets. So you know, I, I sort of set this up for myself last week and, and hooked it up with a credit card. And what, what, what really struck me was even in the iteration of, of new devices, just the, the next version of a device, the, the speed and ease and, and, and frictionless nature of purchasing things uh, online uh, is really moving forward in, in leaps and bounds. And I think the, the opportunities for, for the news industry, both to, to sell, sell content uh, through subscriptions, uh, but also to, to, to sell uh, services and, and, uh, and, and products within uh, news content, I think very, very encouraging uh, indeed. And really, the, the last thing I wanted to touch on is how we are engaged in trying to support innovation in, in digital journalism. I think, again, this goes back to the idea that it's the same, very often the same generation of people who've gone from journalism as it was 25, 30 years ago to, to what it is now. And what we're increasingly seeing is the intersection between computer science and, and journalism. And that is becoming extremely important. It's becoming important in, in, in terms of, of advertising. It's becoming important in terms of presentation on the page. And it's very interesting hearing editors these days talking about HTML5 and grappling with the actual uh, coding that is going on pr producing the, the presentation of, of the paper. And that's, that is uh, one hell of a challenge. Um, so one thing that we're working on uh, with primarily with the Global Editors Network was based in, in, in Paris and has been, is an organization that's very, very keen to, to embrace technology right across online broadcast and, and print, is to look at something called the, the Editor's Lab, which is aimed at putting together uh, journalists, developers, and designers to try to figure out new ways of uh, creating and presenting journalism. Um, and that, that's something that we've done with, with, in, in, in six or seven uh, cities with uh, key newspapers uh, across Europe. We've also been supporting, alongside the, the, the Global Editors Network, the, the Data Journalism Awards. And we haven't really discussed data journalism, but the whole, the whole area of data journalism, I think, a huge uh, opportunity for engaging readers. So just to conclude, I mean, the, the, the question for me is, is, and for all of us, I think, is, is journalism going to get better in the future? And I think given the, the, the tools and innovation uh, and, and devices that we have at our disposal, I just think it's an, unarguable that the, the future for 
uh, journalism is one of optimism. If you look back to 30 years ago, it's actually quite hard to comprehend how we, how we managed to get the news out in those days, given the, the lack of, uh, of tools at our disposal. I think it's, it's, uh, it's unanswerable that, that, uh, that journalism has got better in that 30-year uh, period, and I'm very optimistic that it's going to get better still. Peter, thank you, thank you very much.